miss the feeling. For total home pest control, who are you going to call? Call the bug man. 923-BUG. For total pest control for your home or business, call the original Salvat. Call the bug man today. 923-BUGS. Exiles from what you ask? Exiled from the radio. But now, we're on your television. I'm Bill Pafita. He's Kevin Gallagher. And they kicked us to the curb. But we're back. We are back with Exiles Television on the Pelican Broadcasting Network. We're going to bring you the newsmakers. We're also going to take your calls and give you great information. It's going to be the best damn radio show on television. Look for it on your cable system or download the app, pelicansportstv.com. Eric Gerard is back, but where has he been? I read on the internet that that guy was abducted by aliens. Hello guys, it's Debbie. It's time. I've got a brand new location. 10510 Airline Highway, Baton Rouge, next to After Five Tuxedos. We have the perfect spot to get all your wedding and formal wear needs. Come see our one-of-a-kind name brand and get great prices. With 30 years experience, the best customer service anywhere. It's Debbie's Bridal, Airline Highway, Baton Rouge. See you soon. We start our midweek edition of the Clarence Bug Show here on the Pelican. Here's hoping that all is well with you and yours since the last time we had the opportunity to visit with you here on the Clarence Bug Show. We start today's show talking about getting ready for the fall in this COVID-19 pandemic situation that we are all facing here in this country and around the world for that matter. As we get closer and closer to the fall, traditionally here in America, it is the time where the kids head back to school. Obviously, school settings not conducive uh, to flattening the curve, eliminating the virus because you have so many individuals in close proximity um, during the school teaching period, not to mention riding the bus to get to school, riding the bus back home, et cetera, et cetera. As a result, the outgoing superintendent of East Baton Rouge Parish Schools, Warren Drake, is asking parents with students in the system to please take their online survey. That will allow them to fashion uh, what they deem to be the best model possible for the fall this year. This is an exercise that will be repeated in school systems all across our state, and I would imagine all across our country for that matter, wanting to find out what parents prefer. Would you rather your kids come back into the traditional school setting or some sort of hybrid where you go to school for, I've seen some instances where it's only two days a week, the remainder of the week is through distance learning via online communications with teachers and the class at home. Meanwhile, State Senator Cleo Fields, chairman of the Senate Education Committee, has forwarded a letter to Bessie, the Board of Elementary and Secondary Education, asking them to cancel all athletic activities for grades K through 12 through December of this year because of COVID-19. Senator Fields, in part, in the letter says, quote, I am requesting the board, Board of Elementary and Secondary Education, to include a suspension of all athletic activities for this fall in any rules adopted regarding reopening of schools for the coming year. The suspension should include all activities of any kind that would include student in-person participation in a group setting, including conditioning, practice, and team meetings. He goes on to say, 
that this issue is, quote, too critical to leave up to the Louisiana High School Athletic Association to decide. The Board of Elementary and Secondary Education is currently reviewing this letter and is set to discuss emergency rules for the coming school year uh, on July 14th. So knowing what you know now, so far, based on what the experience of COVID-19 has been like so far, and of course, what it's been like to teach your own kids, at this point, do you send your kids back to school? I'd be interested in knowing what you think on this. Even if you don't have kids, if your kids have graduated, uh, and particularly those of you parents out there who still have kids in school, what option do you choose at this point? Do you send them back five days a week? Do you send them only two days a week? Or do you keep them at home until we have thoroughly eliminated the threat. And additionally, is Senator Fields right? Should Bessie ban all athletics through December? Or do we possess the discipline as Louisianians enough to make this work? <laughs> I got to tell you guys and girls, it pains me to have Senator Fields put this effort forward. But I understand where he's coming from. It pains me because, number one, these student athletes have put in so much time, energy, and preparation for this. I hate to see them go unrewarded. But additionally, there will also be a lot of others on the periphery of this that will be affected. For example, if you ban all school athletics, it's not just the teams that are going to suffer. After all, the cheerleaders practice as a group. They're in close proximity to one another. So if you're going to ban the team from practicing, logic dictates that you also ban the cheerleaders from their practice because they likewise building pyramids, tossing one another in the air and all of the stuff that goes along with cheerleading, you're in close proximity. Do you also then, and conventional wisdom says yes, ban the marching bands from practice. They all practice in a band room, all in close proximity, blowing air, spreading germs, the whole nine. Do we ban the marching bands as well? What about the booster clubs that support the teams, that uh, man the concession stands? They all meet together. Do we ban them as well? It's not just the young athletes that will end up suffering as a result of this. Now, let me hasten to add, all this being said, Based on what I've seen so far, just here in EBR, because I've not traveled outside the confines of the parish since the mandatory mask order went into effect, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but in the hood, where I matriculate 90% of my time, we're not getting it, y'all. We're not getting it. I, I don't want to be that guy that can't wait to get home to pull out my cell phone and call fire department, fire marshal's office, BRPD, whomever, and say, man, y'all need to go check this store out because I was in there today. There were eight people in there. I was the only one with a mask on. So what I opt to do is simply not patronize that business. But based on what I've seen so far, I just don't know and I'm leaning more towards not than yes, I don't think we possess the discipline to pull this thing off. As a matter of fact, the highest ranking medical official in our country, the Surgeon General, is launching a campaign starting today encouraging people, look, if you want sports to come back, you need to mask up. The sooner we can stop the spread of this thing, the sooner we can get back 
the things that we all love dearly, like organized sports. I will leave to you to decide whether or not this is dangling the proverbial carrot on the stick. Those of you not familiar with horses, you know, if you wanted to get them to do something, hang that carrot in front of them and trying to get the carrot, they'll go where you want them to go. I don't know if that is the issue here or not. Maybe, just maybe, the hope here is, okay, what do Americans miss because of COVID-19 more than anything else on the planet right now? You mean aside from my freedom? Well, yeah, aside from that, uh, watching live sports. Okay, huh. Well, if Americans miss watching, taking part in, rooting for their favorite teams in live situations, maybe we can use this as a means of steering the American public where we want them to go. Again, I leave to you to decide if that in fact is the motivation here. I don't know, I'm not inside that man's head. But at the end of the day, <laughs> if there is anything that will get many Americans to mask up, just tell them, hey man, if you want to play some football, you want to go to Tiger Stadium, you need to mask up now. Folks will probably buy out the entire stock of PPE in an eight parish area if you present it to them in that fashion. But I'd love to know what you think. 225 831 1029 will get you aboard. Do you send your kids back to school? five days a week? Do you opt for two days a week and online learning at home for the remainder? Or do you say, well, Clarence, you just told me, you know, in the hood where you frequent, they're not masking up. And if that's the case, I don't want my child sitting in a classroom with another individual whose household does not take these precautions seriously. Call me up and let's talk. 225-831-1029 will get you aboard. And also, I'd love your input on whether or not State Senator Cleo Fields is on target or is he off base in asking the Board of Elementary and Secondary Education to cancel all athletic activities through December. And this would be, of course, if the Board of Elementary and Secondary Education hands down this ruling that is the entire state. That's not just NEBR. It is um, approaching the time of year that a whole lot of folks live for. And in smaller communities, Friday Night Lights makes the entire year for them. Not only from a communal and social standpoint, but from a financial standpoint as well. You can't count the number of schools that depend on that ticket revenue, on that concession stand revenue, and just the emotional and mental well-being of the community to have a place where everybody comes together rooting for a common cause, everybody comes together. It's a social event in and of itself. I know there are those out there that says, Clarence, you want to make money off of tickets and Cokes and popcorn, or you want to fill up the hospitals. What side do you fall on? Tell you what, I'm going to get this first break of hour one out of the way, and we'll talk more. 225-831-1029, got a line open for you, grab it, and we'll talk after our first commercial break on the Wednesday edition of the Clarence Bug Show, right where you've got it, here on the Pelican. Sit tight. the IRS $10,000. The IRS 
garnish my wages. They put a lien on my house. I'm self-employed and didn't report all my income. They claim I owe a lot more than I do. The IRS is the most powerful collection agency in the world. They do not give up until you pay. I couldn't sleep. We were being audited. I called Tax Solutions Now and a great big weight was lifted off my shoulders. I called Tax Solutions Now and they got the IRS off my back. Tax Solutions Now had my wage garnishment lifted in 48 hours. Tax Solutions Now can get you help. Our agents know the rules, can stop the pain, and get you the best deal. Tax Solutions Now saved my business. I qualified for the Fresh Start program. I paid less than I owed. We connect you with a team of former IRS agents and tax Tax professionals who get the IRS off your back. Time is running out. Call Tax Solutions now. Call 800-778-4345. 800-778-4345. From appetizers, pasta dishes, and entrees, La Contea takes pride in preparing all the Italian cuisine we know you love. Enjoy live music every Thursday through Saturday from 6 to 9. Happy hour weekdays from 3 to 6. And brunch on Sundays from 11 to 2 as well as dinner portion-sized lunch specials for under $10. Visit our website to view our menu and book a party or meeting in our large banquet room. Once you try La Contea, your Italian dining will change forever. Hi, gang. Clarence Bugs here. Cox Cable is upgrading the signal from the Pelican, but to catch us, you're going to have to tune in now to a new number. Acadiana, New Orleans, Baton Rouge, Gramercy, Lutcher. Check your guide for details. Hi, I'm Bobby Yarborough with Manda Fine Meats. Here at Manda, we know what the folks of South Louisiana love. They love great flavored smoked sausage, delicious deli meats, and specialty items like boudin and andouille sausage. Manda Fine Meats has been providing these products since 1947. We produce them right here in Baton Rouge, so you know you're always getting the freshest product at your local grocery store. Manda Fine Meats. Taste the fresh local flavor in everything we make. Make it Manda every time. Bolello's Furniture and Appliances, your dependable independent. Depend on us for service, for selection, for price. Get huge Whirlpool savings. Shop now and save on Whirlpool appliances throughout the store. Plus, experience our price match guarantee and ask about special financing. You can depend on the know-how of people who live appliances every day. Bolello's Furniture and Appliances, your dependable independent with nationwide buying power. Welcome back to the Wednesday edition, hour one of today's edition of the Clarence Bug Show. Um, the entire music world uh, is in mourning today following the passing of legendary uh, country music star, Fiddler Supreme, um, Charlie Daniels, passing away Monday morning at the age of 83 years old. You know, musicians... Um, are, are a group of individuals that I've always envied. Uh, when you get to the level of a Charlie Daniels uh, passing away at the age of 83, he will be with us forever. Uh, we are so blessed to have, because of advances in technology and the like, uh, the ability to record and play back pretty much on demand uh, all the great music that we've, uh, we, we've amassed as a species to date. And his 1979 classic, The Devil Went Down to Georgia, is something that, oh man, they will probably be playing on Jupiter and Saturn and, you know, when we reach the Star Trek age, uh, where we are boldly going where no one has gone before, uh, they'll probably still be playing Charlie Daniels' music. Uh, the Devil Went Down to Georgia, uh, 79, maybe, Marty, his best known tune Number one out of the top ten. There you go. By the way, Charlie Daniels survived by his wife, Hazel, and his son, Charlie Daniels, Jr. Uh, so those of you that are members of the community of faith, I, I doubt seriously that his family uh, would be offended, because we don't want to offend anybody these days, if you all that are members of the community of faith would be so kind as to keep that family in both your thoughts and your prayers. Um, it is that season of life where we 
find ourselves now uh, losing or passing on, if you will. Uh, if they have a relationship with the good Lord, then we don't ever lose them. We know where they are. I've had to condition myself to no longer saying uh, that person is lost, unless, of course, they don't have that relationship, which is a different show for a different day. But uh, Charlie Daniels passing away this week at the age of 83. He certainly, certainly will be sorely missed. Uh, as we kind of, and, and this is not in a derogatory sense, muddle our way toward reopening schools, uh, understanding this is something that is totally unprecedented. And, and I was asking myself last night as I was going through some things, if my daughter were still in grades K through 12, how would I feel about sending her back into a classic school environment? Um, I got to be honest with you guys and girls. Based on how I've seen my fellow Louisianians in many instances govern themselves, I don't know if I would be up to that challenge. Now, the preponderance of factors dictating what my ultimate decision would be would be due in large part to who is in my household. It's one thing to send that seventh grader, eighth grader, ninth grader, whatever, into a closed classroom environment, but it's something else entirely for that person, seventh grader, eighth grader, ninth grader, whomever, to go into that environment and then come home into an environment where the grandparents are living with the family. You follow me? There's a much greater likelihood that if the grandparents, and in many cases the parents, contract COVID-19, the repercussions are going to be a heck of a lot more severe than that eighth or ninth grader catching COVID-19. Uh, I just don't know at this point how comfortable I would be putting my child back in that situation. But again, there's so many mitigating factors here. A lot more parents now are returning to the workplace. So obviously, it's, you know, tough if you're working with, it, with, with shortened hours to be able to pay someone to watch the kids, pay for an additional tutor that you may need if your child is not in class with the teacher. It's um, so many variables in all of this. And, and quite frankly, sometimes society finds itself in a position where we have to be forced to do certain things. In the case of the traditional education model, that we adhere to in this country. The nine months on, three months off, taking the summer off, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. For years now, I've been of the opinion that model is outdated. It is something that we did initially because of the agrarian nature of our society. We needed to have the kids off during certain times of the year to help bring in the crops. And we've kind of conditioned ourselves now to nine months on, three months off. Unfortunately, the side effects are, number one, our kids don't retain a lot of what they've picked up, particularly in the early stages of the nine months as they go through that three months off. And maybe more important than all of this, the rest of the industrialized world. If you go back and look at the rankings of educational attainment among children, for many years, America led the pack, top of the list, every single year. But as other societies around the world have gone to year-round schooling, America has fallen further and further and further down the list. So the model itself needs to be adjusted for lack of a better word. Left to our own devices, 
we would probably never change. I mean, after all, for 50, 60 years now, we've all gone to school until the summer months, and then we take vacation. You know, the family loads up or, and, and goes wherever, or the kids simply stay at home in the neighborhood with their friends for three months. That system is no longer reaping the benefits that justify the time, energy, effort, and money that we put into that system. So at some point, realistically, we're going to have to change the model. And I don't have a crystal ball. I can't look into some magic device and say, oh yeah, well this is gonna be the thing that we needed to get us out of this antiquated model. I don't know, but certainly we are going to have to take a very hard look at how we've been administering the process of educating our kids because quite frankly, the numbers show what we're doing now isn't working. It's working obviously to a degree, but when you watch American education fall so far down the list, ranked with other industrialized countries, quite frankly, our kids deserve better. And if most people are true saying, I want more of an ROI, return on investment. I want more bang for my education tax dollars. Well, right now, we're not getting in any way, shape, or form what we're paying for. Whether or not COVID-19 is going to be the issue that pushes us in that direction, I guess only time will tell. Uh, but this fall will probably go a long way in determining what ultimately the model ends up being. Because you gotta realize, come fall, as we head into the winter, that is virus season. And depending on how we handle all of this leading up to the start of football season, the administration of education may not be the only casualty in all of this. If, if you buy into the most pessimistic view of COVID-19. Those that say, Clarence, I hate to tell you, but COVID-19 is going to be with us for at least the next six years until we're able to come up with an effective vaccine. And then you hear those on the other side of Holland, man, don't you, I ain't, if you think I'm gonna let the government stick that needle in my body, <laughs> you are sadly mistaken. At the end of all of this, we may well, and this could be a precursor, Senator, Cleo Fields sending this letter to Bessie, we may be looking at a complete reshuffling of priorities and traditions. I mean, it's hard to fathom in South Louisiana in the fall, no football. I mean, that, that's something that, you know, six months ago, had we said to someone, that this is what we'd be looking at, you'd be the laughing stock of the planet. But here we are at this day and age where the chairman of the Senate Committee on Education is asking the Board of Elementary and Secondary Education statewide to cancel all athletic activities across the state. If ever you doubted whether or not it's truly a different day, this one piece of legislation, actually one letter, should tell you everything you need to know. Aside from the economic ramifications, there's the emotional, the social, the psychological ramifications, all rolled up into this into one. Fortunately for me, I'm a NASCAR fan. I don't know what y'all going to do <laughs> for football. <laughs> I get mine on Sundays. I got that covered. But the rest of y'all, hmm, I have no idea what you going to do. And you think people are protesting now? Tell Baton Rouge, 
huh. there's no more sitting in Tiger Stadium on a Saturday night. Hmm. All of a sudden, calling Baton Rouge takes on a whole new meaning. Just saying. Just saying. Let me get this bottom of the hour break out of the way. We'll talk more right where you've got it on the Wednesday edition of the Clarence Bug Show here and only on the Pelican. Stay close. Hi, I am Dr. Farrell Frugier, Jr., and I am a general dentist at Frugier Family Dentistry. I was born and raised in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. I went to Catholic High School, LSU, and LSU School of Dentistry in New Orleans, where I received my DDS degree in 1986. I always have and will continue to be committed to continuing my education, to invest in technology, which makes the diagnosis and delivery of dentistry more thorough, more comfortable, and more aesthetically pleasing. In our practice, we are here to serve the patients. We want to improve their quality of life and to develop relationships with our patients. In dentistry, we have a chance to impact lives on a daily basis, not just by doing dentistry, but by getting to know them and being a part of their life. We also believe in giving back to our community. So every year, we give back to the Greater Baton Rouge Food Bank, Toys for Tots, and Mary Bird Perkins Cancer Center. Please stop by and visit our office. We would love to take care of you and your family. Jaguar Nation, we need your help in masking up Louisiana. Masking up or slow the spread of COVID-19. During this time, we must continue to wear a mask. Wash your hands and practice social distancing. It's important that we continue to abide by the CDC's guidelines to stop the spread. Jaguar Nation, we challenge you to mask up. Hello guys, it's Debbie. It's time. I've got a brand new location. 10510 Airline Highway, Baton Rouge, next to After Five Tuxedos. We have the perfect spot to get all your wedding and formal wear needs. Come see our one-of-a-kind name brand and get great prices. With 30 years experience, the best customer service anywhere. It's Debbie's Bridal, Airline Highway, Baton Rouge. See you soon. For total home pest control, who are you going to call? Call the bug man, 923-BUGS. For total pest control for your home or business, call the original Salvant. Call the bug man today, 923-BUGS. They said I could find you here. Why are you fishing? Our company's got to ship out two full color brochures and 20 color copies. You're killing me. It's done. Designed, printed, packaged, and shipped. How? You just got to know the right people. Baker Printing, the printing people. How come you get to fish in this private lake? Like I said, you just got to know the right people. You can know the right people too. Welcome back to the Wednesday edition, hour one of Today's edition of the Clarence Bug Show. I want to shift gears uh, for a moment and talk with you about something that I ran across last night. And I was hoping I had an epiphany at the time. And then the more I started thinking about it, I said to myself, ah, Bugs, your problem is you got common sense. I don't, I don't know if this is going to fly or not. It started with me running across an article where a direct descendant of Thomas Jefferson, Lucian K. Truscott VI, put all that on a business card, says that the memorial to Thomas Jefferson in Washington, D.C., honoring our third president, needs to be replaced with the statue of abolitionist Harriet Tubman. Writing an op-ed piece for the New York Times, this descendant of Thomas Jefferson said the memorial is a shrine 
to a man who during his lifetime owned more than 600 slaves and had at least six children with one of them, Sally Hemings. It's a shrine to a man who famously wrote that, quote, all men are created equal in the Declaration of Independence that founded this nation. And yet, it goes on to say, he never did much to make those words come true. Jefferson's memorial in Washington should be taken down and replaced. Described by the National Park Service as a, quote, shrine to freedom, it is anything but. In Jefferson's place, there should be another statue, and it should be of Harriet Tubman. If we honor the wishes of this direct descendant of Thomas Jefferson, and replace the Jefferson Memorial with the statue of Harriet Tubman, are we not missing the point as Americans? In, in reading this story last night, it occurred to me, why can't we have both? In adding a statue of Harriet Tubman, do we not then show how far we've come as a nation. Here's my fear. Number one, we lose context. If we remove Thomas Jefferson, we no longer show where we've come from. Personally, I think Thomas Jefferson, in owning during his lifetime some 600 slaves, and fathering children out of wedlock with at least six of these women that were slaves, it shows that he was a human being. And yet, with all of his shortcomings, he still promoted, put forth, was an integral part of fashioning a system of government that is the envy of the entire world. The group of people that want to remove him from American history either don't care or fail to understand or don't want to understand that if you remove that part of our history, we remove the ability to see how far we've come. If the statue is only of Harriet Tubman, there's no context to show why what she did was so absolutely amazing. You follow me? History is what it is. It's not about removing something from the equation that's uncomfortable, something we are sensitive to, something that gets our emotions raised. It is what it is. It's history. And personally, my opinion only, I would want both statues. Because if I'm taking the grandkids to this memorial, explaining to them why we have this picture of a white man, this statue of a white man, right next to a statue of a black woman. This shows us the greatness of our country. This is where we started. And as a result of where we started, this is what came about. Harriet Tubman, legendary abolitionist, and we are better now as a nation because of it. I, for the life of me, cannot understand how we have allowed people to steer us to a point in time where we feel we have the right to not be offended by whatever. Yes, it was a blot on the soul of the country I love. 
So what did we do about it? Well, we changed. We became better. But it does not change the fact that prior to change, this is who we were. And as a result of, of introspection, as a result of looking ourselves in the mirror, up rose Harriet Tubman. As a result of looking ourselves in the mirror and deciding, Jefferson, along with all the other founding fathers, wrote that all men are created equal. We got to be honest with ourselves. We're not carrying out this edict the way it should be. So we need to change. We don't want to forget that. We don't want to usher that into a bygone era because again, we lose all context and the ability to see the good that has come out of this. There's not a place on this planet, pick a country, any country, there's not a single one that doesn't have in its history something that someone could be upset about. But do you allow your emotions to dictate the removal of facts? Yes. Thomas Jefferson owned slaves. Yes, he dilly-dallied around with at least a half dozen of the women that we've been able to ascertain so far. As a man of color, I could very easily find that offensive. But at the same time, I am not, for the sake of throwing the baby out with the bathwater, going to neglect the fact that he was so instrumental in founding a system of government that in time changed to allow Clarence to own property, to vote, to get an education, to be a partner on equal footing in this country. You don't throw the baby out with the bathwater, especially when it comes to something as important as the history of a society. I guess in hindsight, you, you, you've heard the old adage, people will take, if given the opportunity, the path of least resistance. We want the easy way out. We don't want to have to explain to our kids why such and such is whatever it is. We'd rather just wipe it out, put up something we're comfortable with, and call it a day. We're doing ourselves, we're doing this nation, and we're doing our children a serious disservice when we opt to take that route. I understand. You may not want to have to have the conversation with your children about why there was the need for a Harriet Tubman. You may not want to have to go through life entertaining things that, you know, emotionally can be charged. I get it. But this is about more than your sensitivities. This is about a whole lot more than making you comfortable and talking about certain things. It is what it is, y'all. It's our history. And when we resort, because it's uncomfortable, to whitewashing it, oh, can't say white. Can we still say whitewash, Marty? I still say that? Oh, that's white people. Yeah, we can talk about y'all. Ain't no problem. That's, that's acceptable. When we start whitewashing things for the sake of comfort, we're in a world of hurt, y'all. We are in a world of hurt. We should revel in showing our kids how far we've come. I guess, you know, it makes for a more forceful argument when all you can do is focus on the negative. It's a lot easier 
to have the discussion when you point the finger at them evil folk in America's history. But when you limit yourself to only doing that, you have now put yourself in a position where you are unable to see the true beauty that has come about as a result of our past. Nobody ever said it would be easy. Nobody ever said life would be convenient. It is what it is. And at the end of the day, if we choose to see the beauty, or if we choose to only see the negative, we end up shortchanging and handicapping ourselves. There's nothing worth having that isn't worth going through the struggle to achieve. And once you achieve it, you certainly don't want to forget about the struggle. That is all a part of history. And quite frankly, in the second hour, I'm going to talk about something that, speaking of history, even if you change the history, it still is what it is. Let me get my final break of this hour out of the way. We'll come back, put a big bow on hour one, and wrap it all up on the midweek edition of the Clarence Bug Show, right here, only on the Pelican. Stay close. Hi, I'm Bobby Yarborough with Manda Fine Meats. Here at Manda, we know what the folks of South Louisiana love. They love great flavored smoked sausage, delicious deli meats, and specialty items like boudin and andouille sausage. Manda Fine Meats has been providing these products since 1947. We produce them right here in Baton Rouge, so you know you're always getting the freshest product at your local grocery store. Manda Fine Meats, taste the fresh local flavor in everything we make. Make it Manda every time. No one can stop me when I taste the feeling Nothing could ever bring me down Nothing could ever bring me down Taste the feeling Exiles from what you ask, exiled from the radio. But now, we're on your television. I'm Bill Perfita, he's Kevin Gallagher, and they kicked us to the curb. But we're back. We are back with Exiles Television on the Pelican Broadcasting Network. We're going to bring you the newsmakers. We're also going to take your calls and give you great information. It's going to be the best damn radio show on television. Look for it on your cable system or download the app, pelicansportstv.com. From appetizers, pasta dishes, and entrees, La Contea takes pride in preparing all the Italian cuisine we know you love. Enjoy live music every Thursday through Saturday from 6 to 9, happy hour weekdays from 3 to 6, and brunch on Sundays from 11 to 2, as well as dinner portion-sized lunch specials for under $10. Visit our website to view our menu and book a party or meeting in our large banquet room. Once you try La Contea, your Italian dining will change forever. Live and play on the fairway at Greystone Golf and Country Club, a serene, challenging golf destination located in Denham Springs. For tee times and membership opportunities, go to greystonecountryclub.com. the Wednesday edition of the Clarence Bug Show. We ought, we ought to start taping uh, what, what we go over and through during commercial breaks, Marty, uh, and let folks enjoy. I, I, I was telling Marty about, um, I guess maybe three years ago, three, four years ago, I forget. I um, go to work in the morning at the radio station, and one of my white female co-workers and I are in the break room and she looks at me just so excited so pleased she says Clarence 
I bought a watermelon yesterday that is the sweetest thing I have had in my entire life. And I brought some to share with you all. <laughs> Shame on me. As a joke, I looked at her with a straight face and said, uh, oh, I see you offered the black man some watermelon. You could see the wave come across starting at her hairline all the way down to her chin. It was like in slow motion, the oh my God look come over her face. <laughs> She started stammering, stuttering, <laughs> when I couldn't take it anymore because, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to hold this stern face. Oh, you, go, you come to work and offer the black man watermelon, huh? <laughs> I couldn't hold it anymore. I said, sweetheart, sweetheart, I'm just yanking your chain. I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm joking. I'm just having fun with you. You talk about one relieved woman when I told her that. So. It dawned on me, I said, you know what? This is a good talk topic. So I get on the air and I ask all my white listeners, you went to the store yesterday, you bought a watermelon, you get home, you cut it. You're like, oh my God, what did, this is the sweetest watermelon I've ever had in my entire life. You gotta share it with somebody. You, you, this thing is so sweet, you just cannot keep it to yourself. You call your neighbor, neighbor's not home. Neighbor happens to be black. Do you leave a piece of watermelon on their doorstep? <laughs> Do you leave watermelon on the doorstep? Now, for the black listeners, you're at work, you come home, huh, somebody left a bag on my doorstep. You go, put the keys down on the cabinet, walk to the front door, open it, pick up the bag, bring it inside. You reach down in the bag and you pull out a chunk of watermelon. You're the only black neighbor on the street, right? What goes through your mind? <laughs> it was radio magic. <laughs> it was radio magic. And the number of people, I was, despite what the media is telling us now and showing us about the racial upheaval in this country, I was so encouraged by the responses from people. The overwhelming majority of white people said, well, I'd like to think that I could. I'd like to think that, you know, I'm doing the right thing. You're my neighbor. We live together, same street. We've got a lot of interests that we share that are the same. I just want to be a good neighbor and share something with you that is, for me, again, this is Dude, I've never tasted a watermelon like this in my life. I just wanted to share some with my neighbor. And the number of black people that said, if they left it, hell yeah, I'd eat it. <laughs> you know, it, it gave me hope that all is not what some people want us to believe. And at the end of the day, what you choose to believe is up to you. I understand, plans you got to understand, people are bombarded with this stuff 24 seven, it's all over TV, it's all over the internet, you know, race problems, race problems, race problems, you can't get away from it. But what I choose to do is govern myself based upon my experience. I can't judge anybody. Judge not lest ye be judged, if you want to put some scripture to that. 
I can only judge an individual based upon what my experience with them has been. If we decide we're going to do that, I think a lot of the rest of this stuff will take care of itself. Just saying. You know, I would feel a whole lot worse if I found out next week I'm out watering the plants, neighbor comes out watering their plants. How you doing, Bugs? Oh, I'm doing all right, Billy. How you doing? I'm doing good, man. The man, I, 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 started to, I started to call you last week because, man, I had a watermelon that was the sweetest thing I've ever had in my life. I mean, this, this thing was so sweet, I, I, I had to keep looking at it to figure out if this was cold cotton candy or if it was a watermelon. It was just that sweet. I would be like, well, bro, you didn't bring me any? Well, I, I, I started to bring it, but, you know, I didn't want... I didn't want you to come home and see a bag on your doorstep and it's watermelon. I didn't want you to think the wrong thing. I have the opportunity to make my own decision. And at the end of the day, here's the problem. Here's what you end up running against. If you don't bring me the slice or a slice, preferably a large one, of the sweetest watermelon you've ever had in your life. Because you're not comfortable because of all the other stuff going on. Then I find myself in the position then where I can't bring to you. When I go to the store and buy one and I'm going, oh my God, Jesus, Mary and Joseph, this thing is sweet beyond belief. I got to share some of this with somebody. I could, it, it, it's not right for me to sit here and consume all of this by myself. I want to share this with somebody. I can give it to my white neighbor and nobody says a peep. Now, what's wrong with this picture, y'all? What's wrong with this picture? Both of us have something we're proud of. Both of us have something that is unprecedented. Both of us want to share this with someone. But because the media has chosen to lead us down this path, now we have to deny ourselves this great pleasure. Sharing something dear to you with someone else just because it's the right thing to do. It's because you want to do it. But we allow folks to put us in positions where we can't even do or are unwilling to do the right thing. We got to get past this, y'all. We really, really have to get past this. Because when all is said and done, at the end of the day, we're all Americans. And the sooner we learn to live together, only then can this great representative republic of ours truly live up to its potential. Just saying. Speaking of the media steering us places, I ran across something last night that I've got to share with you. I know it's not a sweet watermelon, but I got to get my top of the hour break out of the way first. As we start the second hour, Ladies, those of you, God bless you, that are pregnant, expecting that little one, some special things you need to be aware of with COVID-19. We're going to spend a little time to start the second hour with Dr. Pam Simmons with Women's Hospital talking about just that. And then I'll share with you something that uh, is an eye opener. That and more still to come in hour two of our Wednesday edition of the Clarence Bug Show right here on the Pelican. Stay close. Hello, guys. It's Debbie. It's time. I've got a brand new location. 10510 Airline Highway, Baton Rouge, next to After Five Tuxedos. 
we have the perfect spot to get all your wedding and formal wear needs. Come see our one-of-a-kind name brand and get great prices. With 30 years experience, the best customer service anywhere. It's Debbie's Bridal, Airline Highway, Baton Rouge. See you soon. No one can stop me when I taste the feeling Nothing could ever bring me down Nothing, nothing could ever bring me down Taste the feeling Hi gang, Clarence Bugs here. Some big changes are coming to the Pelican and Cox Cable. July 15th, our numbers are changing. We're easier to find and we're in high def. New Orleans, Gramercy, Lutcher, Acadiana, Patterson, Baton Rouge, new numbers coming and a brand new signal. It all happens July 15th on Cox Cable. Do your buddy Clarence a favor, will you? Get all the details by checking your local guide. For total home pest control, who are you going to call? Call the bug man, 923-BUGS. For total pest control for your home or business, call the original cell vent. Call the bug man today, 923-BUGS. of today's edition of the Clarence Bug Show. You know, as we uh, all become more accustomed to dealing with the ramifications of this pandemic of COVID-19, we tend to focus a lot of times, and rightfully so, on the most vulnerable parts of our population. With COVID-19, obviously, the elderly, uh, had the bulk of the spotlight early on, and those individuals uh, with compromised immune systems, uh, pre-existing uh, life-threatening conditions, and so on and so forth. I knew, in all likelihood, conventional wisdom would say, at some point in time, we're going to arrive at a level where we are focusing on expectant mothers and their children to be. Fortunately, here in the Baton Rouge area, we have an amazing facility, Woman's Hospital, that's ahead of the game on all of this. And recently, when the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention uh, came out with new recommendations for pregnant women, the great staff over at Woman's Hospital we're all over this. So joining us for this segment is Dr. Pam Simmons. She is a doctor of maternal and fetal medicine physician at Women's Hospital. Dr. Simmons, good morning and how are you today? Good morning, thank you very much for having me on the show today. I am doing well. Fantastic. So do pregnant women need to minimize their exposure to the public during this pandemic? Yeah, so you know, I'm just going to kind of take a step back. And, and early on um, during the COVID-19 pandemic, when we, you know, were first seeing everything kind of starting in February and March, um, 
taking recommendations from the CDC, and, and already at that point in time, we were saying to go ahead and minimize some of our exposure. Um, some of our governing societies and governing bodies had also put out recommendations that if you're going to be coming towards delivery, to also kind of stay at home the last couple of weeks prior to delivery. So I think... Um, a little bit of just common sense tells us if we can minimize our exposure, we mm-hmm. can minimize our risk. Uh, our risk is never going to be zero. Um, and then more recently, back on June 25th, I, uh, you guys are aware the CDC came out with a new recommendation saying that pregnant women might be at increased risk um, um, for COVID-19 as far as hospitalizations. Um, and so, yeah, so we are we have already been telling women um, that are coming in for their prenatal appointments, um, and especially as different recommendations have come along. So initially could continue to work, and then it was to go ahead and, and have a mask on while you're out in public. And then if you can minimize your public exposure, to go ahead and do that to the best of your ability. And then prior to being delivered, you know, if you're coming up in the last couple weeks of your pregnancy, Mm -hmm. we would like you to truly minimize as much as you possibly can and stay at home during those, during those times. Obviously, as we've gone through the different phases of shutdown, attempting to reopen, et cetera, et cetera, when you say minimize exposure, we lay people traditionally take that to mean stay away from public settings if possible. Obviously, an expectant mother in an ideal world would have a series of regular visits to her doctor to be able to ensure uh, ease or safety, fruitfulness of the pregnancy. Are you recommending that expectant mothers maintain their regularly scheduled prenatal visits? Yes, sir. Um, so very important. Many things can happen on, along the pregnancy, um, and so it's it's important to maintain your appointments with your physician. Earlier on in the pregnancy, or early on in uh, COVID-19, um, probably a lot of people can correlate that they saw a shift in some of their um, doctor's appointments being in person versus being on, like, kind of through telemedicine, meaning right. either a phone call or something through um, a computer screen where you could see your physician mm-hmm. and that they could check in on you. As we've shifted, I feel that a lot more of these appointments are coming back um, into person. Um, There's still some areas that are still doing some of those as uh, either on phone or through a a, a telemedicine type means. But yeah, so I think it's very important to make sure to keep keep your appointments. Now some of the things though to help minimize those exposures is a lot of hospitals around the area have restricted who can actually come into the hospital and also from safety precautions in the hospital, all of the employees here at Women's, we're checking our temperature daily, we're all wearing masks, um, and we expect the, the same that everybody coming into the hospital is also wearing a mask. So we're, we're doing what we can to try to minimize um, that risk, but again, that risk is, is never zero. Right. Let's say for the sake of our conversation, Dr. Simmons, an expectant mother suspects that she's been exposed to COVID-19 or someone that has it. What is the recommended course of action? Sure, so if a patient is um, around a known exposure Mm -hmm. or um, she has any symptoms um, that are consistent with possibly Mm COVID-19, the first thing to do is go ahead and call um, her physician's office and then they can go ahead and do a, a uh, testing order. So then she'll get the order for the test and then they can come uh, either into a woman's hospital or at different testing sites and actually be tested for that. Um, and that test is coming back more quickly every day. You know, earlier on when this all started, we were getting results back every five to seven days. And now um, all the way up to where you can get results in the same day, depending on, on where you go. So, um, and at that point in time, if they also think that they've been exposed or might have it, at that point in time to also um, kind of self-quarantine um, as those results are, are pending and they're waiting to get the results of that as well. So are there any particular signs that expectant women should be aware of as far as COVID-19? Yeah, the, the two most common um, symptoms that people will experience are a fever um, and shortness of breath. Now. As a pregnant woman, having shortness of breath is just 
the name of the game for almost the entire pregnancy. So sometimes that can be a little hard to discern. Mm -hmm. But adding on that fever component, and especially if they're getting short of breath or if they're having a cough, um, those are those are the two most common symptoms that most people have. Now there are other symptoms too, such as loss of taste um, or smell, also having um, uh, increased bowel movements or diarrhea. So there's different, all kind of vague. That could be other things too, but it could also be COVID-19. And so, kind of just identifying those symptoms of what might be going on with them, and then saying, "Hey, this might be nothing, but it also might be COVID-19. So let's figure this out and right. call our doctor and get tested." Um, I don't know if this next question is beyond your purview of not it or, or not. If it is, I certainly understand. Um, do are you aware? here in Baton Rouge or nationwide for that matter or other parts of the world. Are we testing newborns for COVID-19 as we work our way through this pandemic? Yeah, so I can answer that to some degree. Okay. Um, so if we have a mother that does have, co does have COVID-19, mm -hmm. yes, those newborns are being um, are being tested, um, but we are not routinely, routinely testing all newborns of all mothers that have no symptoms. Okay. Uh, so that's that kind of delineates out of if the mother is known to have um, COVID-19, yes, those infants are being, or those neonates are being tested. Um, but if this is a mom that has gone throughout her pregnancy totally fine, has no symptoms, and then uh, uh, routinely not uh, testing the neonates. One additional thing that I'll kind of add on to that as well is, is here at Women's Hospital, and I can only speak specifically for us, mm -hmm. so say I have a woman that I know is coming in for a C-section, or I know she's coming in for um, an induction of labor. She's getting towards the end of her pregnancy, and I know, hey, today is Wednesday, she's coming in next week, um, and I know that she's going to uh, actually step foot in our hospital for labor and delivery. Mm -hmm. We're actually testing all of our moms um, that we know are coming in. So baseline, we're going to know whether mom was positive or negative when she uh, hits our door um, from a test a couple days ago. So that also really helps us discern which babies also then need to be tested afterwards. Because if, again, the mom's had no symptoms and she's COVID-19 negative, mm -hmm. we don't need to test that baby. Finally, Dr. Simmons, looking down the road a ways, I know you all have been extremely busy uh, at Women's throughout all of this. Are you all gearing up for what's expected to be a, a boom in births in this nation as a result of all the stay-at-home orders from COVID-19? <laughs> oh, such a loaded question there. Um, so, yeah, we're, we always have job security from um, a baby's point here. But, um, yeah, so... You know, we uh, at Women's Hospital, we deal with almost 8,000 deliveries a year. So we, uh, we love taking care of moms. We love taking care of babies. So we will be um, happily awaiting any other uh, pregnancies that are coming down, <laughs> coming down the road. Yes, we love what we do here. Dr. Pam Simmons, maternal fetal medicine physician at Women's Hospital. Thank you so much for the time and thank you so much for what the good folks at Women's are doing to ensure a healthy future uh, for the babies here in Louisiana and our nation. We appreciate that sincerely. Thank you very much. All right, there you have it. Ladies, if you are expecting, uh, you want to take those little extra precautions just to ensure uh, the health and well-being not only of yourself but of course of your hopefully soon-to-be baby joining us here in the great state of Louisiana as we continue to deal with COVID-19. Particularly uh, those of you that are in the latter stages of the pregnancy, if nothing else, please remember that last two weeks make it a point to be sure you limit your exposure to the public. Uh, your child will probably never think to thank you about it, but it'll be a little something you can, you know, give yourself a little extra pat on the back for in that regard. Uh, I told you as we headed into the top of this hour that I ran across something I've got to share with you. And, and it puts in context if you are honest with yourself and you analyze what I'm about to read to you. It puts in perspective how individuals that claim to care so much about a certain segment of our society until you look back into the past and see 
where we are today. That's coming up next after our first commercial break of this hour on the midweek edition of the Clarence Bug Show, only here on the Pelican. Stay close. Sometimes life is wonderful, and sometimes it's not. Cherish the good, but always be prepared for life's challenges. At Private Healthcare, we provide the peace of mind you deserve. With Private Healthcare, you'll get the coverage you want and healthcare you need. If your employer doesn't supply healthcare coverage and you don't qualify for Medicare or Medicaid, you need to give us a call right now. Private healthcare is private health insurance for ages 65 and under with medical, dental, vision, and even prescription coverage. When life comes at you unexpectedly, you need to be ready. And health insurance is your financial safety net. Health insurance has never been so easy and affordable. If you're looking for health coverage at the best price and your annual household income is $35,000 or more, call the number on the screen now and speak with a live health care consultant. Don't wait. Get the coverage you need now. Since you that ear at Gayrard is back, now where's he been? Well, I was told he had joined the CIA trying to stop the Russians from stealing our election. Vodka. Nazdorovia. Nazdorovia. Free elections. <laughs> That's right. The Clarence Bug Show is back, along with the exiles, Bill Profita and Kevin Gallagher. We put the band back together. South Louisiana's talk team, and it's only on the Pelican. 10 a.m. till 12 noon, right here on the Pelican. From appetizers, pasta dishes, and entrees, La Cantea takes pride in preparing all the Italian cuisine we know you love. Enjoy live music every Thursday through Saturday from 6 to 9, happy hour weekdays from 3 to 6, and brunch on Sundays from 11 to 2, as well as dinner portion-sized lunch specials for under $10. Visit our website to view our menu and book a party or meeting in our large banquet room. Once you try La Cantea, your Italian dining will change forever. Back to, oh, this one over here, okay, this one, that one, which one, that one, okay, thank you, Marty, <laughs> thank you, Marty, uh, I, I, I told you guys and girls, I, I wish that I could record what goes on off camera during commercial breaks, um, but based upon what Marty and I talked about, and he's white, in case you didn't know, I'm black, oh, really, in case you didn't know, uh, yeah, <laughs> we'd be locked up. <laughs> we'd be locked up. Y'all ain't ready. Y'all ain't ready for the conversations that we have uh, off air here. But I, I am so grateful for the relationship uh, that we have cultivated over the years. I uh, told you that I ran across something last night that really put in very stark terms to me how entities are playing us. I'm reading an article, it's an op-ed piece in the New York Post. I'm reading the article and I'm saying, wow, wow, wow. And it got to a point where I said, wait a minute, something, uh, something's not right here. When I figured out what it was, I was like, this is unreal. The article is entitled, the op-ed piece, All That Kneeling Ignores the Real Cause of Soaring Black Homicides. It reads as follows. The FBI released its official crime tally for 2016 on Monday, and the data flies in the face of the rhetoric that professional athletes and Black Lives Matter protest over the weekend would have you believe. Nearly 900 
additional black citizens were killed in 2016 compared with 2015, bringing the black homicide victim total to 7,881 for the year. Those 7,881 black bodies are 1,305 more than the number of white victims, which in this case includes most Hispanics with the same period of time, even though blacks are only 13% of the nation's population. Think about that. You are only 13% of the population, which leaves another 87%. Let's say for the sake of the conversation, take out Hispanics and Asians. So white people would be probably 60 plus percent of the population. You're only 13%. But the homicide totals, you are 1,305 more than 60% of the population. The increase, the article continues, the op-ed piece, the increase in black homicides last year comes on top of a previous 900 victim increase between 2014 and 2015. In other words, in 2014-15, the number of African Americans killed in this country by other African Americans increased by 900. The year before that, the increase was 900. So now we're at a point, the article states, at being round number 8,000 homicides for the year in the African American community. The article continues, who's killing these black victims? Not whites, not police. It's other blacks. In 2016, the police fatally shot 233 African Americans. The vast majority were armed and dangerous, according to the Washington Post. The paper categorized only 16 black male victims of police shootings as, quote, unarmed. Contrary to the Black Lives Matter narrative, the police have much more to fear from black males than black males have to fear from the police. Black males have made up 42% of all the cop killers in the last 10 years. Did you hear that? Black males are only 6% of the population, but we make up 42% of the people that kill police officers in this country. Among all homicide suspects whose race was known, whites that killed blacks only numbered 243. Violent crime has now risen by a significant amount for two consecutive years. The total number of violent crimes rose 4.1% in 2016 while homicides rose 8.6%. In 2015, violent crime rose by nearly 4%, homicides by nearly 11%. Here's what is so startling, and I, will, I won't, don't have time to read you the rest of the article, but here's what's so startling. I'm reading the article and I'm, saying, my God, these numbers are unreal. But why do they keep referencing 2015 and 2016? So I go back to the byline and the headline in the article entitled, All That Kneeling Ignores the Real Cause of Soaring Black Homicides. And the date is September 26, 2000. 17. 
So for three years now, we've heard the mantra, Black Lives Matter. And every single year, more and more and more, hundreds more young black men are killed by other black men. In 2016, according to the Federal Bureau of Investigation, 7,888 black people murdered in this country. Rounded off, 8,000. Of the 8,000, probably 7,680 some odd were killed by other young black men. But it's the police and the white folk that's the problem, right? The narrative <laughs> is alive and well. The mainstream media has convinced us that the popo and white folk are the problem. I beg to differ, my friends. I mentioned to you earlier today, just making observations since the mandatory mask law went into effect. In the hood where I live, we don't get it, y'all. We don't get it. And if we don't get that, protecting ourselves, we probably don't get where the real problem is coming from. This article, all that kneeling, ignores the real cause of soaring black homicides, was published in 2007 and what are we doing today in our response to what is happening in our country? We're doing the same thing we did three years ago. Was it Albert Einstein that coined the phrase, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results? We're being played, y'all. We are being manipulated by individuals that know how to pull our emotional strings. Of the 16 unarmed individuals, every single one of them was a tragic death. And those responsible should be held accountable. But when I see eight thousand on one hand versus 16 on another and I'm marching I'm protesting I'm rioting I'm looting because of the 16 the remaining 7,800 and whatever are just as dead Shouldn't my indignation be just as strong? When all is said and done, there are folks out there that are amassing political power and financial wealth, playing on the emotions of people, a particular group of people. And when you realize, here's an article that mirrors everything that's going on today, except it's from three years ago, a thinking person has to ask one's self, did we not learn anything? Maybe, <laughs> maybe, We've arrived at a point in this country where we are now comfortable in our misery. It's America. You have that right. But for God's sake, please, y'all, stay out of my way because I want things to get better.
Just saying. I got it, Marty. I know. I'm late. Tell you what. Let me get this bottom of the hour break out of the way. We got to talk more, gang, and we'll do it next. Right here on the Wednesday edition of the Clarence Bug Show, only on the Pelican. Stay close. For total home pest control, who are you going to call? Call the bug man, 923-BUGS. For total pest control for your home or business, call the original Salvant. Call the bug man today, 923-BUGS. No! Live and play on the fairway at Greystone Golf and Country Club, a serene, challenging golf destination located in Denham Springs. For tee times and membership opportunities, go to greystonecountryclub.com. Bolello's Furniture and Appliances, your dependable independent. Depend on us for service, for selection, for price. Get huge Whirlpool savings. Shop now and save on Whirlpool appliances throughout the store. Plus, experience our price match guarantee and ask about special financing. You can depend on the know-how of people who live appliances every day. Bolello's Furniture and Appliances. Your dependable independent with nationwide buying power. Exiles from what you ask, exiled from the radio. But now, we're on your television. I'm Bill Perfita, he's Kevin Gallagher, and they kicked us to the curb. But we're back. We are back with Exiles Television on the Pelican Broadcasting Network. We're going to bring you the newsmakers. We're also going to take your calls and give you great information. It's going to be the best damn radio show on television. Look for it on your cable system or download the app, pelicansportstv.com. Hi gang, Clarence Bugs here. Some big changes are coming to the Pelican and Cox Cable. July 15th, our numbers are changing. We're easier to find and we're in high def. New Orleans, Gramercy, Lutcher, Acadiana, Patterson, Baton Rouge, new numbers coming and a brand new signal. It all happens July 15th on Cox Cable. Do your buddy Clarence a favor, will you? Get all the details by checking your local guide. They said I could find you here. Why are you fishing? Our company's got to ship out two full color brochures and 20 color copies. You're killing me. It's done. Designed, printed, packaged, and shipped. How? You just got to know the right people. Baker Printing, the printing people. How come you get to fish in this private lake? Like I said, you just got to know the right people. You can know the right people too. Welcome back to Hour 2 of today's edition of the Clarence Bug Show. Uh, great things happen all the time during commercial breaks. And uh, had the opportunity to talk with one of our go-to guys for uh, all things athletics, uh, talking about legendary head coach Roger Kador of the Southern University uh, baseball program. It, 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 coach, are you there with me? No, I hear someone. Is oh, it you? That's me. How are you, my friend? <laughs> Fine, you, I am doing well, Coach. Uh, you called because uh, you, you told me that you've come across something as we all start hopefully getting ready for uh, uh, the resumption of football, uh, whenever that is, that uh, is going to make it particularly hard for HBCUs, correct? And all small colleges. And all small colleges, not just HBCUs. No. And, and the reason is they're probably, some of the people already know, have already canceled the season, mm -hmm. but they don't want to be the bad boy and do it because they're just hoping this thing overflows and, and fall in their lap. Right. And the reason being, Clarence, the protocol, they have to have a whole different protocol. 
if you're going to try and play at football season, you got to hire people who go to take tests. You got to right. pay for tests. You mm-hmm. got to do a lot of other stuff with people you got to hire that are extremely expensive right. to do, and you're not going to make any money. Mm-hmm. How are you going to? How are going to you be able to afford it when you're not making any money? Yeah, and and that I is. Don't play with anybody. There won't be any fans in the stands. Right. You got me? Right. And you got to pay all these people just to test it. It's, it's a big cost. Yeah. Not and to, not all to, the other things. Yeah, and all the other it, things. You got to sanitize facilities. Sanitize. There you go. That's what I was missing. The uh-huh. sanitation part of it. You got to do that. You got to hire people to do it. So where is that money coming from? Well, it's going to have to come from somewhere because, as you well know, many smaller schools, uh, football is the lifeblood of that athletic department. They they make their budget for the coming year based on putting bodies in the stands during football season. So where does that leave those folks? It leaves them out in the cold. Ouch. It leaves them that we we are living in a different world. With this virus, this virus has caused problems never seen before. Uh-huh. And no one ever had to make these kind of decisions before. Mm-hmm. Even during world wars, maybe yeah. a few schools did not play football, but some schools played football right. during world wars. Right. So my point is, this is bigger than a world war. And if you can't put people, if you're going to put them in the stands, you got to pay people to clean these places. Right. And it's got to be done on a constant basis. Uh-huh. This thing, I mean, you got to keep them clean. And when it comes to restrooms and concessions, and right. it's just, this thing is so big, Clarence. And when you look at it, do they have the finances to do it? Probably not. Mm-hmm. And this is why some of them are secretly hoping Someone make the decision for them, so they don't have to make the decision. They don't want to be the bad boy. You got me? Right, right. From from an emotional and psychological standpoint, um, what does your gut tell you, Coach? How far will we be willing to go to bring back live sports, understanding that there are folks right now that have been through so much behind COVID-19 that they need desperately something to restore some normalcy in their lives. How far are we willing to go to to accommodate the average American in that regard? Some people are willing to put people's lives on the line. And you know what? The people's lives they put on the line are willing to take those chances. Mm-hmm. They're willing to take that chance because of sports right. and the chance to entertain. They're willing to do it. Mm-hmm. So it ain't just the people's fault who are the promoters. Right. It's the people they're promoting mm-hmm. and, the, and the fans who want to come. They're willing to take that chance. Mm-hmm. Outside, outside of um, someone stepping up, whether it's uh, a, a philanthropic organization or the federal government or, or whomever, outside of them stepping up and ponying up a lot of money to help out smaller schools, are we looking at potentially the loss of football and maybe some other sports at smaller colleges because of COVID-19? Because they just don't have the money to make playing sports profitable. Nobody's going to pony up any money, Clarence. They're not going to do it because why point it up for one if you can't point it off for the other? And yeah. You got me? Yeah. See, athletics is one thing to a large extent. You know, they don't, it's hard to do that mm-hmm. and not, you know, not cause a problem. So uh, I just think we better be prepared from an emotional standpoint right. to not have it. You want to hope that it happens. But I can't see how mm-hmm. when, when this virus is taken off again. It's all I've listened to the people who are the professionals. Right. They're saying this thing is, is a, it's not going away right now. And when I hear Mr. Fossey 
say, this thing is just getting kicked in. I believe him. Well, you guys are in there doing research center looking at this virus. If there's any silver lining out of all of this, Coach, maybe, just maybe, we as Americans will get back to the business of educational institutions being just that. I mean, our fascination with sports, we may as well now have athletic students instead of student athletes. Maybe we'll start to get back to more of that now? Well, as soon as this virus is over, <laughs> we're going back to athletics. We're, <laughs> we, <laughs> we're going <laughs> right back to it just as soon as we can, huh? <laughs> uh, as soon as we can. Let me tell you, sports ain't going away. Sports does something for Americans and all over the world. Oh, yeah. Fortunate, I've been in a lot of different places. Right. It's something about athletics, man. Yeah, uh huh? It brings family together, and you know, it's it ain't going nowhere, Clarence. It's gonna be right here. It's just that this year, football and smaller institutions are gonna be extremely challenged. And the key is how much they're willing to take a deficit. Yeah. To try and play. Yeah. It's a deficit situation. Yeah. There is no profit gonna be made. Nope. There is none. You can forget about it. It's gonna be awfully hard. So, and it you can't blame the athletic directors, and you probably can't blame the presidents. They all in the they get, that's a major responsibility they're dealing with. Oh yeah. And I hope that they can find a way to make it happen because it's trust me, they ain't going away. Coach, great to hear your voice. Good observations. Thank you, my friend. Stay safe. <laughs> you too, Peter. <laughs> it, um, just imagine a school like Southern University. A.W. Mumford Stadium, if memory serves correct, holds ballpark figure 26, 27,000. If you're forced to operate social distancing, six feet apart, the whole nine, 25% of the stadium is filled. You're talking what? 27,000, you're talking 4,500 people. That's an automatic deficit situation. You're not going to make money. By the time you figure in travel costs, utilities, um, the whole nine, you're not going to make any money. Matter of fact, you will probably lose money. And when you're talking about an institution's athletic department that because of football, you have all these other sports. When you remove that from the equation, it's not a pretty picture. Now, we are the ones that have made the conscious decision that we're not going to write a check to our alma mater for the biology department. We're not going to write a check to our alma mater for the law uh, the law school. We're not going to write a check to our alma mater or our favorite school for the music department. But we will buy a ticket to the game. That's on us, y'all. That is strictly on us. And at the end of the day, athletics is what it is and it has its place. But there's a reason they are called student athletes. I get it. I get it. There, there, there's no excitement in packing a room to watch your child take, a, uh, take an engineering test. Not the amount of excitement that there is when the jukebox or the golden band from Tigerland comes turning the corner in the Mumford Stadium or coming down Victory Hill. Can't compare. But at the end of the road, this is supposed to be about making better and more productive citizens for our country and its respective communities. Coach probably hit the nail on the head when he said, don't get too emotionally invested in football. Because if we have some, 
it is going to be radically different from what you and I have become accustomed to, pure and simple. For me, it doesn't matter if there are no fans in the stands at Talladega, as long as they run it. For me, it doesn't matter if there's not a single person inside Daytona International Speedway, as long as they're running. It's a little different for everybody else. Sorry, it's what it is. <laughs> Final break of today's show. We'll bang it out of the way. Come back, put a big old bowl on this puppy, and wrap all up. The Wednesday edition of the Clarence Bug Show, right here, only on the Pelican. Stay close. From appetizers, pasta dishes, and entrees, La Contea takes pride in preparing all the Italian cuisine we know you love. Enjoy live music every Thursday through Saturday from 6 to 9, happy hour weekdays from 3 to 6, and brunch on Sundays from 11 to 2, as well as dinner portion-sized lunch specials for under $10. Visit our website to view our menu and book a party or meeting in our large banquet room. Once you try La Contea, your Italian dining will change forever. Live and play on the fairway at Greystone Golf and Country Club, a serene, challenging golf destination located in Denham Springs. For tee times and membership opportunities, go to greystonecountryclub.com. Jaguar Nation, we need your help in masking up Louisiana. Masking up or slow the spread of COVID-19. During this time, we must continue to wear a mask. Wash your hands and practice social distancing. It's important that we continue to abide by the CDC's guidelines to stop the spread. Jaguar Nation, we challenge you to mask up. Go Jags! Hello guys, it's Debbie. It's time. I've got a brand new location. 10510 Airline Highway, Baton Rouge, next to After Five Tuxedos. We have the perfect spot to get all your wedding and formal wear needs. Come see our one-of-a-kind name brand and get great prices. With 30 years experience, the best customer service anywhere. It's Debbie's Bridal, Airline Highway, Baton Rouge. See you soon. That's right, the Clarence Bug Show is back, along with the exiles, Bill Profita and Kevin Gallagher. We've put the band back together, South Louisiana's talk team, and it's only on the Pelican. 10 a.m. till 12 noon, right here on the Pelican. Hi, I'm Bobby Yarborough with Manda Fine Meats. Here at Manda, we know what the folks of South Louisiana love. They love great flavored smoked sausage, delicious deli meats, and specialty items like boudin and andouille sausage. Manda Fine Meats has been providing these products since 1947. We produce them right here in Baton Rouge, so you know you're always getting the freshest product at your local grocery store. Manda Fine Meats. Taste the fresh local flavor in everything we make. Make it Manda every time. Welcome back to the final segment of our Wednesday edition of the Clarence Buck Show. Uh, question, Marty, you ever been to, to, to Delpit's Chicken Shack? You ever eaten there? No. Never been. Well, this would be a good week to go. I don't know how many of you are aware, but July 6th through the 12th here in EBR is Black Restaurant Week. And this obviously falls in the middle of uh, this time where we're having all the racial upheaval in, in, in our country. Um, you can follow the organizers of Black Restaurant Week for this week-long celebration on Facebook and Instagram. Again, it runs from July 6th through the 12th. Um, so often, you know, black restaurant owners um, struggle in the best of times, and you throw COVID-19 into the mix, then, uh, You've got a recipe to decimate many of the black-owned restaurants uh, here in EBR and Louisiana, if not the nation for that matter. Uh, so if you can, white people, make it a point uh, to patronize. You like that, Marty? Make it a point to patronize uh, the black restaurants. Um, here in East Baton Rouge, 
If you've never had a piece of, quote, knuckle-sucking fried chicken, that's the Delpit's mantra, you have led a deprived life. If you've never had piping hot chicken from Delpit's Chicken Shack, you have led a deprived life. Uh, I think, and I hope I don't butcher this too bad because I'm, I'm, I'm just thinking about it just now. It is probably Delpit's Chicken Shack chicken is probably the equivalent in New Orleans of uh, the chicken at Willamay's Scotch House is one. I mean, they're, they're, I've never eaten there, but all my friends from New Orleans tell me the chicken at Willamay's Scotch House is legendary. Uh, and there's another one in New Orleans. Uh, I, I, the, the, the name escapes me. Maybe, maybe Jonathan out in the truck uh, might know. But I know for a fact Willamay's Scotch House has legendary fried chicken in New Orleans and is probably the equivalent uh, of what we have here in Baton Rouge at Delpit's Chicken Shack. Either way, if at all possible, patronize um, the black restaurants this week. And who knows? You may make some new friends. You may find a new favorite dish. And uh, you may well inadvertently end up helping us to realize that, huh, white folk like fried chicken just like we do. Might realize, huh, white folks like red soda water just like we do. You know, huh, white people like candy yams with their fried chicken just like we do. You might be surprised at what you ended up finding out. Now, all of this being said, you have to guard yourself, guys and girls, against the powers that be out there that are looking, searching for, trying oh so desperately to lead us all astray. <laughs> If you stick around in this existence long enough, you start to see patterns emerge from certain things. Have you seen the story recently? CNN now is pushing the narrative that in our homes, we should no longer use the phrase master bedroom or master bathroom. That's racist. It harkens back to the era of slavery. So we can no longer call the biggest, nicest bedroom in the house the master bedroom, nor can we call the accompanying bathroom with that room the master bathroom. Never mind the fact that I am the master of my home and this is where I sleep. Never mind that as the master of my domain and the room I sleep in, I want to call the master bedroom, that's a racist. Well, at least according to CNN. You see how ever so subtly they pull you in to this absolute idiocy well, you get a master bedroom. You, you can't call it that. That's racist. But am I not the master of my domain? So why wouldn't it be since I sleep in that bedroom as the master of my domain, why would it not be the master bedroom? Listen, y'all. There is absolutely nothing wrong with attempting to become better as people and as a nation. There's nothing wrong with that. You've heard me say God knows how many times. When you look at where we were as America and where we are now as America, not what the media tells you, 
but what your everyday life and experience should tell you. When you look at that, you realize, wow, can you imagine we've come this far? In a hundred years, we go from people that look like me. It's against the law to give them an education, to let them own property. Heck, back in the day, it was illegal to let black people ride a horse. And now we've had black mayors, black governors, a black president, black chiefs of police. We can go to school anywhere we want. We can live where we want, work where we want. That's a beautiful thing, y'all. That's a beautiful thing. In this short span of time, to come from where we are or where we were to where we are, now, that's not to say we should ever stop trying to be better. The purpose of this whole existence, other than to glorify God, is to leave for our children something better than what we had. I don't want you to work as hard as I had to work to raise you and give you the things to give you a leg up in life. I don't want you to have to go through what I went through as a young person. That's, that's our charge. We brought those kids here. It's our responsibility to do that. But we also have to keep things in context, y'all. And for God's sake, don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. For those of you that have never had the privilege of setting foot outside of this country, if nothing else comes out of all this, hopefully it will spur you to, at the earliest opportunity, go visit someplace else. Go visit another country, preferably for more than a weekend, and talk with the people that live there and find out the things that affect their lives. Guaranteed, y'all it will give you an entirely different perspective on how blessed we are here in the United States of America. Just saying. Just saying. Don't forget, tomorrow, the exiles. Bill Profita, Kevin Gallagher, right here, same bat time, same bat channel, same bat desk. Till then, I'll give it to you. You know what? <laughs> you are absolutely right. America, we're not perfect, but doggone it for my money, it's the best there is. And God knows there's no place else on his green earth that I'd rather be. Speaking of the good Lord, you do realize by now that he loves you, right? And I hope you know that I do too. <laughs> best news you're going to get all day, son. There ain't a doggone thing you can do about either one. Take care of yourselves and each other. Love you much. God bless.